Hey everybody, Steve Przbrowski here. Welcome to the next episode of 101 Tips to Ace Your Promotional Examination. This is this episode is going to cover tip number six. So without further ado, let's jump on into tip number six. As a reminder, my website, www.code3firetrain.com has a free stuff link with lots of great promotional preparation, professional development, leadership, and training stuff. So lots of good information on there to help you or anybody else be the best you can be. Again, as a reminder, these, uh, these um, episodes, webinars, whatever you want to call them, are based upon my latest book from Fire Insuring uh, Books and Videos, 101 Tips to Ace Your Promotional Exam, available off their website, fireinsuringbooks.com, as well as my website. And then there's still a 25% code to use, 101 Tips, as you can see there in the green box. If you have any issues with it, just reach out to me and uh, I'll see what I can do on my end. But uh, let's get going to tip number six now. Now, tip number six really, I think, comes down to understanding positions that are below you, but also preparing for positions above you. Now, this may sound a little interesting because I always stress prepare for the position, not the test. I mean, I think that's pretty obvious. Prepare for the test and the position, but ultimately prepare for the position. But I'm turning the tables a little bit right now because when I say understand positions below, in many departments, you don't necessarily have to fill every rank before you go to the next rank. I mean, most of us in every department, you typically get hired as a firefighter. And then from there, you may get promoted to engineer, but in some departments, you can maybe go right from firefighter up to company officer without even serving as an engineer. Um, I know there's people that say, well, that's ridiculous, that's BS, you need to be at every position. Well, in some departments, engineer is an awesome rank. Well pretty much, excuse me, every department engineer is an awesome rank that a lot of people don't want to leave, can't blame them, no supervisory responsibility, less headaches, hook up and look up, you know, or some people say hook, look and cook. I got the easy job, I'm the driver. Hey, yeah, I get it. So that's why in some departments, because there's a log jam, because, hey, engineer, nobody wants to leave it or very few do. If you required a firefighter to go to engineer before company officer, they may never get there or it may take them 20 years. And if there's no engineers that want to jump to company officer, what's the department supposed to do? Force them? So the point is, is you may find yourself getting promoted to a position that you never held the junior rank for. Or in some cases, I've seen people bypass, say, battalion chief. In some departments, you can go from captain rank, company officer, right above battalion chief up to the next level, which may be division, deputy, assistant chief, whatever the rank is in your department. Yeah, captain or company officer skipping battalion chief and you go, what the heck, that's ridiculous. Well, again, it depends on the department, the needs, the supply and demand of you know, personnel. Again, just like engineers, a great position in a lot of departments, battalion chief's a great position and for different reasons than being an engineer, but battalion chief in a lot of places, it's the highest um, union represented position you're still on a shift schedule. You're still at the firehouse because what happens when you get above battalion chief in most departments, say deputy assistant division or fire chief, <laughs> 40 hour work week. You know, you got this thing that you're a slave to all the time and always attached to. And hey, you know what? I get it. The electronic leash. Hey, I signed up for it. I knew what I was getting into. I'm not complaining, but there's a lot more responsibility when you jump above battalion chief to the 40 hour executive chief ranks for lack of a better um, phrase, I guess. So battalion chief is one of those other positions where a lot of people stay at because again, there's a lot of benefits and perks versus going to a staff position. Thus, a lot of departments are forced to maybe go now um, to, you know, they, they open up the division or deputy or assistant chief tests to the battalion chiefs, but a lot of times the BCs are like, nope, I'm happy, I'm good. I'm happy, not me. And a lot of departments then have to go to the next rank of captain below. And that's what usually happens is there are captains that are willing to step up to the chief officer ranks bypassing battalion chief. Not maybe by, think something they wanna do, but hey, it's an opportunity. Nobody else wants to put in for it from the battalion chief ranks. So what's the department supposed to do otherwise? Go to the outside? Oh, that'll really tick off people as I, you know, I get it. So the point is, is that don't blame somebody for jumping or skipping a rank or two because it's not necessarily their fault. You know, well, I guess they could decline the promotion and say, ah, thanks chief, but don't hold it against them and don't hold it against the department because there's sometimes a lot of reasons why that happens or even take it to the extreme. I've seen lieutenants or captains 
company officers jump right to fire chief and you go, what? Skipping battalion chief, deputy division assistant? Yeah. Again, it depends on the size of the department. It depends on the dynamics of the department. Again, if a department doesn't have people willing to jump up, they may have to go down to other ranks or what's the op or what's the opposite? What's the um, alternative? Go to the outside, which nobody wants to have happen typically. So the point is, is that if you find yourself in that position, getting a position um, that you haven't filled before, I mean, it's easy. If you get promoted to captain, you've already served as an engineer and a firefighter, you already understand the positions below. So it makes it easy. But if you're one of those that skips a rank, hey, it happens, I get it, good for you. Hopefully you have a good understanding of that rank that you're now supervising or responsible for. It's not impossible, it can be done, but if you've never been an engineer and you're now a captain, hopefully you're not throwing your weight around, you know, you know, and challenging your engineers. I mean, I don't, you know, because think about it, your engineers, before you tell them or suggest something to them, they're going to be expecting you to, well, or they're going to say, you never filled the position. You were never an engineer. So what makes you the authority or subject matter expert to tell me what the heck to do just because you're my boss? Yeah, those are, you don't want those conversations. So hopefully to earn your credibility and respect, I'm not saying you have to fill every position, but understand as much as you can about those positions. So if you never filled that position of engineer, I'd be going right to that engineer and letting him know up front, hey, you know what? I never had the chance to fill the engineer position. Hopefully you took some engineer classes because you can still take classes, maybe get certified in the position, even if you've never filled it. I would hope you've at least done that. Hopefully you go to your engineer and say, hey, you know what? Teach me as much as I need to know about becoming an engineer so I can better supervise you, better be, be a better boss, be a better leader and help better help you. So help me help you, as they say. You know, and I think if you came with your hands out, hopefully that person in that position would show you some credit, show you some respect and say, hey, that, that's cool. You know, I mean, because there may come a point where you're gonna have to maybe suggest something to them and you want to have that credibility and respect. Um, and again, it comes from building relationships and hopefully having a good working relationship with them, with um, those that you're fortunate to supervise. So reach out to them, connect with them, but also learn as much as you can because you don't want to be that leader that's continuously, well, I don't know, I was never a driver, so I don't know. Well, that's not an excuse. Learn as much as you can about it. And the, the second part about this, about preparing for positions above, Again, you may have jumped from firefighter to company officer, skipping engineer. You learn about the engineer rank as best as you can through the, through the, as many talented drivers as you're fortunate to work with. And you may have no desire to promote upwards, but you know what? Never say never and uh, never, never discount an opportunity. Just because you don't want to go to those positions above doesn't mean that the opportunity may not arise or maybe you change your mind at some point in your career or whatever else. And if nothing else, guess what? Prepare for the positions above because you may have to act in those positions because it's not uncommon for the senior captain to sometimes have to act up to battalion chief when a BC is gone. Whether or not you want to be a battalion chief, that is a seniority system in some departments, or it's just a you know point the finger of who you know who 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 wants it, you know. But prepare for the positions. You may find things that uh, you weren't aware of. You you'll be better at your current position. Um, and again. It, it's all about helping you prepare for the test, obviously, but eventually prepare for the position. But again, this will also help you be better at the test because you'll have an idea of what those ranks above expect of you. And I also got to give props out to my buddy, uh, Battalion Chief Andy Starnes from, uh, out from Charlotte, North Carolina, who is the voice of experience for this tip. Um, Chief Starnes, great dude, a lot of great stuff he does on thermal imaging cameras. So I encourage you to check out his stuff on Insight Training. Um, um, insighttraining.com, I-N-S-I-G-H-T training.com, if I'm not correct, um, if I'm correct, sorry. Um, he's a great resource, if nothing else, Google Andy Starnes, uh, wealth of information. What, what more can I say? And a good friend, brother, and mentor. So honored to have him contribute some thoughts. So as always, thank you very much for the gift of your time. Um, hey, you know what? I'm trying to keep these short and sweet. Hopefully you're finding some value to these. My contact information, my social media footprint, please don't hesitate to reach out and I can be of any assistance to you. So until the next episode, be safe, take care and keep being the best you can be for those that you're fortunate to lead and serve. Have a great day, everybody.